Hi, all lectures of my visual web development course are online now, and I'll add a link to them in the description in case you missed it. Anyway, this video is not about me, it's about my students and what projects they did during the course. Check the video description because many of them have contact info there in case you have any questions. Now, without further ado, let's look at their projects. First project is a brick breaker game. It has two different modes. First, a competitive mode, where it looks and feels like the classic brick breaker games we know and love. The paddle moves nicely, and you can control the angle of the ball by catching it on different sides of the paddle. The backgrounds and graphics are really nice, I think. This mode has a total of five levels, each with their own graphics and varying difficulty level. Then, the second mode allows you to upload an image, and it's going to be turned into bricks, automatically. I think this is a great feature. You can even do some image processing here, to remove the background if you want, and you can choose how big the bricks are going to be. Larger bricks means that the image is not so recognizable anymore, but two small bricks means that you will need to play for a very long time. Next project is Pac-Man, but in 3D. The team used 3JS to handle the 3D implementation, but they did very many things by themselves. Things like the movement of the character and collision detection, the generating of the maze and the AI for the enemies, and even pathfinding using Dijkstra's algorithm. The game has three difficulty levels, each of them with a different background. and you can store your scores in a local database. The third project is space exploration. You can control this rocket and go into space where you need to avoid colliding with different objects. What is great about this project, I think, is that all graphics are procedurally generated using code and in vanilla JavaScript, with no external libraries. Even motion and collision detection are handled really well. You can also land on planets, where we get even more nice animations and a whole new scenario in which you need to defend against all kinds of threats. I guess I don't need to tell you where some of my students are from. This project has to do with the coronavirus. It's a 3JS game that teaches how easily this virus can spread. You play a medic that goes around and vaccinates people. The keyboard controls are implemented really well. It feels nice to play. Collision detection is good, and the movement of bot characters is also nice to look at. The game gets harder in later levels, where more people are added to the scene. Next project is called Clever Drudger. It's a game in which you need to avoid obstacles, but also collect power-ups that increase your score faster. The game is made using vanilla JavaScript, and even the sounds are synthesized using code. Collision detection is handled well, and the sound is played during this time. The power-ups often appear close to these obstacles, making it more challenging to play. Thank you. 
Next project is a taxi game. Taxi. Let's go. You need to take the passenger safely to the destination before you can move to the next one. Thanks, driver. You saved me today. Let's go. The game feels nice to play, it has good sound effects and even cutscenes that I think play a big role in user experience. Thanks, driver. You saved me today. Let's go. The game features a simple scoring system and handles collisions using bounding box checks. You are a very bad driver! This next game reminds me of Duck Hunt on the NES. You play it by using the webcam and moving your hand around to target the ducks. Spreading your fingers apart shoots the weapon. These controls are implemented using HandTrack.js. It works okay, but sometimes it causes false positives, making the game challenging, especially on the higher difficulty settings. The background is animated, and it turns from day to night. I find it really funny that these ducks are drawn in paint. Next we have Wizard and the Mythical Adventure. What I immediately like about this game is the title screen and that guy in the corner teaching me things. It feels more like a complete game because of it. You play by jumping around to collect items and perform spells to battle four types of enemies. I think this is great, especially because it was done using only vanilla JavaScript and hand-drawn graphics. This project shows the four seasons using complex techniques and animations. The tree is a fractal, and the leaves are dynamic elements drawn on top of it. The sun and moon travel in an ellipse, and the colors in the scene are affected by that as well. The leaves change from green to orange, and then fall during the autumn. In the winter, snowflakes are randomly generated, and they rotate as they fall. The leaves grow back in the spring. What else? Oh yeah, the birds are animated in CSS. This next project is a climbing game. I really like the look and feel of this one. It has background music that changes tempo, depending on what happens in the game. The controls for the spider are also really smooth. The spider and some other elements were modeled in Blender and exported as a sequence of images. This game was made entirely in vanilla JavaScript. You can see I really like playing this game. This next game is inspired by Flappy Bird, but it has many differences, like that you need to remove obstacles by clicking. I think this is a real masterpiece of procedural generation. Everything was procedurally generated the objects, the backgrounds, even the sounds. It's really great, and done using plain JavaScript without any external libraries. 
Maybe there's one thing that isn't procedurally generated, though. The sound effect when you lose. Boom. I also think this is the best part. The next project is Super Amazing Mini Golf. And I have to say, this sure is amazing. It was made entirely from scratch, without any libraries. All the physics are really well thought out. It's a really good implementation of forces, friction, and collision handling is almost perfect. To me, it looks like a professional team of developers made this, and it's in the final stages before releasing it on the market. Great job, guys! This project is a fishing game. You need to shoot the harpoon to catch fish. The solution is very mathematical, so to speak. The trees are fractals, and the waves are sinusoidal curves, and derivatives are used to figure out how the boat should move on top of them. Most of the graphics are procedurally generated. It's really fun to play. Next we have a platform game. It may look simple, but there are many things going on here. Obstacles, power-ups, obstacles that can be destroyed after taking the power-ups. Coding this is not easy, even if the characters look simple. Game has a nice feel to it. The backgrounds and the animated atmospherics are great. There are also fine details, like the animated background done in multiple layers and the sparks appearing due to friction. Really fun to play. This next one is really unique. It's a game where you need to solve math equations and input your answer by drawing it in front of the camera. It works most of the time, but sometimes it fails to recognize the number properly even if I input the right answer. The guys do color thresholding to detect the marker location. Then, they apply a convolutional neural network trained with handwritten digits to classify the drawn shape into a number. I think this could be a great teaching tool for kids. Really great, guys. In this game, you play by drawing lines that become platforms for the main character. I think it's really creative. You need to avoid obstacles, but also collect items. Some of the obstacles are really interesting, like the log that hits you if you hit it directly, but you can still roll on top of it. Nice graphics, sounds, and a good feel overall. Next we have the International Shooting Sport Federation Shooting Game. Title says it all, it's a shooting game. There are several shooting modes to choose from. This one where the target moves, but also two others where the target is fixed, but the gun is harder to control. It's moving with Perlin noise.
I think the game feels really complete. And last but not least, the sound color memory game. It may look like it's just clicking buttons, but many things happen under the cover. Graphics are procedurally generated, and so are the sounds. Animations are really nice, and great feedback is given to the player. I really like the idea to use a rocket going to the moon to mark the progress. The animated background is also a nice touch, and the fireworks effect appearing when you win. That's it. Hope you found it exciting and useful, because I sure did. Let me know in the comments which is your favorite and if you want to see a video like this next time I teach a course.